is my honor to introduce Professor Hanlin Yang. Professor Yang is president of the Beijing Genomics Institute, one of the world's leading genomic center. Professor Yang has played a leading role in many important genomic research projects, and his work is helping us to discover new applications of biotechnology, such as synthetic biology and stem cell therapies to help society. He is also a leading bioethanist and has appeared a number of commissions sponsored by the United Nations, the World Health Organization, and UNESCO. Professor Yang will talk to us today about sequencing technology in biomedicine. Please welcome Professor Hamin Yang. It's great for this opportunity. I do thank the host organizers for giving me this opportunity. It's great to be together with you. I was a student, being here and then seeing all the cartoon characters remind me of my life at your age in the university or universities. It's great to be a human being at this period of a man's history. We are so lucky that we have witnessed the great revolution as told by Dr. Craig Venter this morning, we are so proud that I have been, and you will be, and we all have been a part of it, even mine is so small. Before my talk, I will sing all the praises for life, the beauty of life. We will put all the information together about the way to decode life. There are so many important technologies in biomedicine. I fully agree to and firmly support the mission of the Molecular and Frontier Foundation to make the society, especially young people, interested in science. We love life. Nothing would be more beautiful than life. Of course, human beings have been always asked the question, what is the secret of life? What is life alive? This question would not be answered fully until now. It will depend on your future contribution. But this question at least has been partially answered by this double DNA structure by these two young people at that time. If you do something, you must have the belief. My belief in genomics is the first life is of sequence. I did not invent it. I would like to quote from both Watson and the Crick that the precise sequence of the bases is the code which carries the genetic information. This is a life. This is another life. This life becomes a life just because it has received all the information to make it. We call the sequence or order of ATCG a sequence, and we call this technology to determine at each side of the big genome of any living things whether it is A or T or C or G, the technology of sequencing. It's also the case for other animals. It's the case for plants as well as for microorganisms, both our enemies and the friends. Then the second belief is even simpler. Life is digital. I would like to quote again from John Sarston, the chief coordinator of the English part of the Human Genome Project as well as a Nobel laureate. The instruction for making a life from one generation to the next is digital. If we put these two languages together, as done by Dr. Craig Venter 
a few hours or minutes ago, we can see actually life in nature is digital. As what John Sutton says, the practice of biological research has been changed forever by the understanding that the life is off or in sequence, that the life is digital. Based on these two beliefs in genomics, then it's naturally easy to understand why sequencing or sequencers and the computers have become two of the most important tools for genomicists as well as for biologists working in every or various field. I would like to tell you a few stories about the three stages in BGI, my institute has history. This institute was called born for a small part of the Human Genome Project. Paraguanta has talked about this story based on his own experiences. This project has been called a mission impossible. I would like to quote from an older generation colleague that it's impossible. We should never know complete the genome sequence of human genome. If so, then we still have to wait. Wait for three years, not long enough, 30 years, not long enough. He promised that we have to wait, wait, wait for three centuries. It's not true. We have done it. More importantly, we have it done together. This is the first time for China. One of the developing countries, I do enjoy this word, to join the international science community and an international collaborative project. It's really not so easy at that time for Chinese to do this job. Even this region is only about 1% of the whole genome. And our task was only half a million. But at that time, with this kind of sequence, for one read of sequencing reaction, we have to use up 30 tips. It's all 15 millions of tips have been used for this project. And finally, we did the job. We contributed actually about 2% of the human genome sequence raw data. BGI was known by working on rice, which is so important. We published the first paper as the cover story by mainland Chinese in 2002. This paper has been cited more than 1,500 times. And then this paper has been evaluated by the international community as one of the landmark papers which should be read by all plant biologists. We can see the impact of this paper and the free released rice genome sequence. Before that, there were more research on wheat than rice, and that situation has been changed by this paper and the rice genome sequence data. And this impact is even more significant on the food research in the developing countries. We can see the significant difference. There might be many different interpretations for these two curves. But our colleagues from the International Rice Research Institute in Philippines give me this slide. The reason is only with the rice genome sequence and then the researchers in all other countries can clone the rice genes or QTL which are responsible for five years for high quality of rice and so on. This example clearly indicates that the genome sequencing is just the first step, just the beginning, just the foundation of research and the use of any organisms. Let's sequence more. As our young people say, if it's useful, like rice, like silkworm, sequence them. If it's delicious, like a chicken, like others, sequence it. 
if it's only cute, like the giant panda thinks it. And then BGI is really grown together with the new generation sequencing technology. When we see praises for the Human Genome Project, we also sigh for it. It's too slow, it's too expensive, you can see. More than 3,000 people in more than 16 groups in six countries, and then at a cost of 3 billion US dollars, and then for 13 years, just complete. Actually, it will never be completed, sequence one person's genome. This situation has totally been changed. If the contribution by China to the Human Genome Project is only 1%, and at the end of 2008, we published the first deployed genome sequence of an Asian individual. As another cover story of the Nature Journal. The most important breakthrough in technology made by BGI is the sequencing of the giant panda genome. The giant panda genome is the first reported de novo assembly of a large mammalian genome achieved using only now generation or next generation sequencing methods without the help or independent of genetic map, physical map, and the knowledge of repeats which are important for linking all the short reads of sequences generated by the machines. Bioinformatics, a combination of IT and the BT, is really the core competitiveness of genomics. We have the huge computers, please don't be impressed by these figures. And we have rating most, if not all, of the software or programs for our generation sequencers. I have to admit, most of them are no better than others. Some of them are equally good as yours, and then really some of them are regarded as the best of the best. That's the reason. Until this moment, we're able to do something. Our partners cannot be done, even the software is freely available. As reported in Sense, that the BGS Center enhances its reputation as a world's large sequencing center. By doing this and that, that's just a part of the cover stories published in Nature and its series, and in, its, in Sense. Imagine, that's the significance. VJ alone is able to do 100 jobs of the Human Genome Project. Our capacity is almost how many? 10,000 giga a day. Until the end of last year, we have contributed 643,000 of G. The human genome size is, is 3G or 3,000 megabases. So we have contributed together with our colleagues all over the world about, I to say, more than 200,000 human genome size of sequences. It's still at the beginning. The story I have told you actually just correspond to the three stages of breakthrough in sequencing technology, from hand sequencing to automatic sequencing machines which made the initiation of human genome project possible. And then the second breakthrough is the comparative automatic sequencers, which made the completion of the human genome project and a major job of the sequencing projects before 2007 possible. And now it's called massively parallel sequencing technology, which is regarded as a sequencing revolution, please be reminded. We have to be cautious to use the term revolution in natural sciences. We are working very hard. For example, we published two monkey genomes and then several cell lines or CHO, which is so important for genetic engineering. We have sequenced together with our colleagues in the United States that make the more red and then also two species of 
of uh, ends. One has a rather high social organization behavior, the other has low. That's the reason that we now have initiated 100 social insects genomes project and the 1,000 insect transcriptome project to, to go to the frontier of biology. That's neurobiology. We also have sequenced dozens of strains, both wild and domestic silkworms, and then as well as those animals which might be more sensitive to the climate change, like the polar bear in the northern pole, penguin in the southern pole, as well as this animal, Tibet antelope, on the roof of the world. For plants, we sequenced the potato genome and the cucumber genome, and then Chinese cabbage, as well as the Indian pigeon pea genomes. And then, based on these achievements, we have initiated the 1,000 plant genomes project. We have sequenced more than 30 strains of corn or maize, which are important for breeding, as well as so many wild and cultivated soybean genomes before we initiated hmm, the 1,000 soybean genomes or germ plasma lines project. It's not enough. For rice, we are going to sequence 10,000 of rice accessions or cultivars or strain, and we have already published in Nature Biotechnology 50 of them in microbiology. We have initiated that 10,000 microbial genomes project aiming at sequence most, if not all of the identified, cultivated, or cultured microorganisms. We also have, in collaboration with our colleagues in the States and Europe, this Earth Microbial Project. We will sequence by means of metagenomics at least one million samples collected from various parts of the world based on the Google map. This is our vision. But not only my ambition, that's the ambition of this community to sequence every living thing on Earth. Nothing biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Now we say nothing in biology makes sense except on the basis of genome sequences. For human being, as a part of the effort, we published the first paper in the name of the International Consortium of 1,000 Genomes Project. This is a big job published in Nature Biotechnology that we found, together with our colleagues, that about 0.5 to 2% of genome are population specific. There's none or all existence in our genome. For example, those sequence, or some of those sequence, might be found in the Chinese genomes, but not in the European genomes, and vice versa. We also find found, just like what Dr. Craigventer told us, the variations or diversity of human genome is much more or higher than we expected before. We also have confirmed that the RNA sequence, which is transcribed from DNA sequence, actually there is a difference by the process of RNA editing, even though this difference is not that big as some of our colleagues described, but it is there. We all know the pathways are important for genetics research. We have initiated this project, which is running very well to sequence at least 250 small families we call the trials, the parents, and the, the kid in collaboration with our colleagues in the Netherlands. This is even more important. When the project is completed, that we are going to sequence the genome and the metalum of at least 5,000 identical twins in collaboration with St. Thomas Hospital in London. We all now have reached the consensus the importance of sequencing genomes. 
in collaboration with the British colleagues, we are together going to sequence at least 10,000 of British genomes and then 550,000 of Dan's genomes. It's almost 1% of the whole population in Denmark. How many individuals to sequence for Chinese? At least 1 million, based on all the statistical data. I cannot do it before my life. Perhaps I can see it before my life because of the rapid improving sequencing technology. Sequencing, sequencing. Why do we do sequencing? I just give you four very simple examples. First, the story is about where we are from and how we are here. This is an example of why clumps. We published this paper based on the Y chromosome inheritance. You know, this Y chromosome is only inherited from the father and that of the father from grandfather and, and we among the gentlemen. This paper is very interesting. The genetic legends of Mongols. We found out at the beginning it was not so well accepted that approximately one out of 200 of males in the whole world are carrying that Y chromosome strictly, that's a haplotype of Jin Heinz Han. No matter you believe in or not, now it has been gradually accepted that it is true. It's also corresponding to the recorded history. And we have started the different populations. This is another example that we sequenced. The coding sequence or exome of 50 Tibetan Chinese and compared with almost a similar number of Han Chinese. Then we found some differences. For example, one of the genes, which has an 80% of frequency difference, it means that only 10 percent of the high Chinese would have this ideal, but at least 90 percent of the Tibetan Chinese would have another ideal. Of course, it cannot completely explain why Tibetan people have adapted them so well to the high attitude, but at least partially explain the possible mechanism. This is another of our paper. As a cover story, in sense, what's this? Actually, that's scanning electron microscopic picture of the root of a hair. We analyzed the sample contributed actually by an Australian tribe. With the results, might change our knowledge about the origin and the migration of Asians. We published another paper also using the thousands of years of old hair now kept in one of the museums in Copenhagen that we got about 80% of the diploid genome sequence. And then it tells us perhaps the Pella Eskimo people are descendants of Asians. Now there are many stories about it. To answer the question partially, where we are from, and then what we are. This is a classical example, which we have read in all the textbooks, that one out of three billion bases change would change the fate or all life of a person. That's sickle cell anemia. Just A, change it to T at the one of the genome side. And then we can predict all and all at a different level of life. We further improved the exomic sequencing technology. And we found that exomic sequencing technology is at least now a powerful tool for studies on monogenic diseases. We have published in collaboration with our colleagues a series of paper 
to demonstrate its power. That's the reason we initiated the 1,000 Mendelian or monogenic diseases project. We hope that in eight or 10 years, all the monogenic diseases could be at least prenatally, non-invasively diagnosed, even though now we can do only part of it and we are only to provide a choice by the parents, especially the mother. And we are working on cancer. Even though it's very beginning, for example, we published two papers in Nature Genetics. One is that frequent mutation of genes encoding ubiquity mediated proteolysis pathway might be related to cancer genosis, and as well as chromatin remodeling related genes would be related to cancer genesis. We further optimized and improved the technology of single cell sequencing. It's obvious that even from the slide, with most of the cells are cancer cells, we have found the high heterogeneity of the sample. We have published two papers in the same issue of a cell to demonstrate the single cell sequencing technology might be a way, might be one of the choices to crack the bottleneck of cancer research. We are ambitious in collaboration with our colleagues in both Europe and the States. We have initiated the 10,000 Autism Genomes Project because now, both in China and other countries, the frequency of getting autism are really bigger and bigger. This is a job. To follow steps of Dr. Craig Venter, we sequenced the mixed DNA samples in our gut, and we identified, as we predicted, at least 2,000 species bacteria, and as well as three, more than 3 million genes of open reading frames. It is about 150 fold that of the estimated genes in the human nuclear genomes. And we have sequenced many parasites or worms. We have joined the effort last May to solve the problem of that pathogenic E. coli still raise the banner of done together, shared together, and then we have released all the data immediately and called again and again for sharing of the materials and genome sequences. And finally, that's one of the papers we published together with our colleagues in the New England Journal of Medicine. We will publish this paper about the relationship between HBV and the hepatocellular carcinoma next week in nature. It tells us a lot about how the liver cancer, which is more frequent in Asia, especially among Chinese, related to the infection of HPV viruses. And now we are much powerful than before. Based on the trace DNA sequencing technology, now we can just get three or five ml blood from the mother, the peripheral blood, and then we can do the early stage and non-invasive diagnosis rather well. Until now, we have done more than 20,000 cases, and we do have detected some patients of Down syndrome or transomic 21. This method is still under development. We have explored all the parameters related to this technology. By publishing a series of papers, we also have improved the software because you can see the signals of sequencing might be still overlapping between normal baby and the, the patient baby from the DNA in the mother's blood. But now we can say 
in collaboration with our colleagues in Chinese University of Hong Kong, the accuracy might be 100% or close to 100%. The most interesting application of genome sequence might be individual identification. We know based on the royal and the accuracy of DNA replication, all our somatic cells might share the same, now not the same, but quite similar genomes. That's the reason all the materials from any part of the human bodies might be used for individual identification. It's so easy. If we know that each pair of the clones of anybody that has one from his father, one from his mother, nothing would be simpler. With the advance of technology, now we can see even though it's a traditional marker, where is this father from, or who is the possible father of this baby? Obviously, it's he, not he. So nothing would be more specific and reliable than DNA for individual identification. We have done a lot. We analyzed at least 1,500 samples during the tsunami in Thailand as a friendship between the two countries, and we all know of him. We were told that he was killed, and then we were told that the DNA individual comparison has finally confirmed that he is he. Even though we have not seen the data, the technical data or sequence data, but for this guy, we also know of him very well that we can see this is the, just the general DNA profiles of his and his two sons, which were also killed uh, on the same, uh, in the same year. That, that's true, that he is the father of these two men. Of course, as I told my colleagues, in those relevant departments, this raises a very, very important ethical issues. We are working. The VGI is supposed to become, or now actually is, the biggest DNA sequence laboratory in the world. We are ranked by nature as the fifth institute in China, second to the whole Chinese Academy of Sciences, Tsinghua University, and the University of Science and Technology of China. We are ranked as the 17th March lagging behind in the whole Asia and the Pacific top institutions. It's said that the BJ would take the world by storm. I always say, no, never believe it. We are not intended to do so, and we will never be able to do so. BGI is regarded as the sequencing factory for the whole world. This is true that now we are still at that very primitive and developing stage that we are doing the job. Just this year, on the 3rd of February, science says BGI has emerged as a genomic superpower. BGI is not qualified. BGI has never been qualified to be a superpower in any respect, but it is true that now we have just opened our sequencing facility in Copenhagen because I got my PhD from University of Copenhagen as well as two sequencing centers of facility in the States because we have had the long history of collaboration. In one of the reports about whether China would become the life science leader of 2020, that it says that BGI may well create a very different model. BGI model is like to test, of course, one thing is to test any other thing, the model typically used in the West. I'm asked, as the president, what is BJ model? My answer is very clear. No model is BJ model. But perhaps it is true, something rooted in Chinese culture. First, to be humble. We always say there is always another layer over 
how the another layer of sky, over sky we can reach and we can see. Today, I have learned so much from Craig Venter, from other speakers, and from you. And the second, be confident. Even though now we are still lagging behind, even though now we are still poor, I am very grateful to all the staffs of BJ since the very beginning. They are working so hard. Always feel that, oh, him. I will not show you the picture, how they are working hard. I show the picture, how they are tired after working. Science has also exposed the picture of the three generations, first, the second, and the third. We are confident of our young staffs. They are as young as you are. Big sense in a bigger country, that's one gene, one of the second generation leaders of BGR. He has published numerous papers in CNS. As a journalist from Natural Rights, these BGR researchers are as smart as you are, as confident as you all are, and for their age, tremendously experienced. I'm very proud of them. And that's the third generation leaders, or even the fourth generation leaders, as reported in the Washington Post and the Newsweek Journal. We are confident of the future science in China, in Singapore, in Asia, and in the whole world, because now they know more about the science, much more than we were at the age similar to yours. That's the text we have written for the school kids. And then we always say that gene should also be taught to kids as early as possible. That's the reason we have the summer school for the kindergarten kids, for the primary school kids, for the middle school kids every year. As one of the core values in Chinese tradition persistent, I agree with natural technology editorial that the genome sequencing has provided a starting point then all the other researches can be placed on it. Ultimately, genome sequence is the digital foundation onto which all, all, all in biology would be based. We are not tired of doing the dirty job. We know how to explore the values from the genome sequences. The more importantly, nothing can be done alone. That's the human genome spirit, owned by all, done by all, shared by all, proposed by us. This is a cover, which is rather good to reflect what we are thinking. Let's cook. Let's cook more, even though it's much more than we ourselves need. Let's share it with all others. Let's cook it together. That's the reason we have this culture that to evaluate the collaborative project is to see finally whether the partners become friends or not. We have friends all over the world through sense, for sense, by doing sense. You can see all our papers. Please be reminded when I say we, it does not mean only BJ, of course not myself. It means all the people who have been involved all BGI's collaborators because genomics cannot be done alone. It's another core value in Chinese tradition or culture appreciation. We all know when you drink from, drink the sweet water from the well, don't forget who helped dig it. I would take this opportunity to thank all the collaborators and supporters again, to thank all the people who have continuously encouraged me and supported me and then all you, that we share the same belief, sense should be good for all. Welcome to BGI, even for a short visit. Welcome to BGI, please stay for a while to collect, work together with our young staff. Thank you very much again for the opportunity. Thank you very much again for your attention.